Here he is in the top left hand corner. So here he is. Uh, I believe for the first time in this Taiwan Hong Kong region, it is the Red Terran, the Korean Terran hailing out of the land of Japan. Playing for Prep Esports, it is Hon Mono. And spawning in the bottom left hand corner of Moon Dance, we have the Taiwanese. We have the Taiwanese Protoss player himself representing good game and gaming. GGG. It is nice. GGG. Stand up. <laughs> GGG. Uh, nice. Uh, the rising star in the scene, the Taiwan Hong Kong uh, Valencia champion, I believe, of the previous EPT season. Yeah, Nice is a very, very strong Protoss player. Honmono has been really uh, thrown in with the Sharks in this one because this is one of the favorites in this region. So uh, if Honmono wants to prove that he can hang with the top of the top when it comes to this region, this is his chance to prove himself. And right away we see Nice going for a very early probe scout, just being as annoying as he can with the harassment, even throwing down an assimilator just to limit the choices that Honmono has with his builds here. Oh my god, yeah, yeah, already some cheeky play coming out from Nice. Um, and I, the real question is that I have is, is Nice, sorry, is Honmono stuck in, in a tank with a shark or is he the shark, you know? Uh, <laughs> because Nice is a very accomplished player in the region, don't get us wrong, but this is Honmono's first foray and he is a very unique, very stylistic player. Yeah, that's totally right. Uh, if there's anyone who has what it takes to be able to make an upset in this region, Honmono is that player because, as you said, in the region, he's a little bit of an unknown entity. Uh, nice might not be so aware of him as a player unless they've been met before in open cups. So uh, he does have that surprise factor for whatever he does decide to go with in this game. Yeah, exactly. We were following Honmono in his rise to victory in the open and closed qualifiers of DreamHack Taiwan Hong Kong. And he was able to surprise a lot of us here, you know, making his first foray in this region. But now he's up against literally the best player. Uh <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's I uh, w welcome to the region, you know, um, but what I would say he's in maybe his favorite matchup. He has a lot of very interesting ways to approach the TVP uh, uh, matchup. Yeah, and as you say that straight away, throwing down a second and third racks very early, going for this three, uh, three one zero setup that we have been seeing quite a lot in this matchup, but at a much earlier time, uh, this does look like uh, it can bring him into an all-in situation, but it has been scouted already by the Adept. Yeah, exactly, exactly. The Adept not only slows down this building CC on the low ground, but he also gets into the main base. He gets in once again just to confirm the production, just to confirm what is going on in the main, even, even completes the shade. Yeah, completes the shade there, and he's being so annoying with his units, delaying the CC so much, and gets that Adept in. He's going to delay these Raxes as well, and if Honmono was planning to hit a sharp timing with these early Raxes, this has been slowed down already so much just by the first two units of Nice. Yeah, exactly. For those who are unfamiliar with Honmono, he is all about timing attacks. He's all about two base all-ins, especially in the TVP matchup, and I wouldn't be surprised if he had planned to go for one now, but again, his plans are, are in shambles here as Nice has scattered everything and slowed everything down. Yeah, that's right. Nice has seen everything. He's even going to be able to take out this Hellion, which takes out a lot of the firepower of whatever it was that Honmono was going for here. Even starting to pick off these Marines. And uh, Nice really just going for a bit of a skill check move here, just trying to get the most out of every single unit that he has here. Yeah, exactly. It's not like Nice is being hyper aggressive or anything. It's just been one Adept, one Stalker, and now a third Stalker. And he's been really been able to throw a massive, not even just a wrench in the works, just that nothing is working uh, <laughs> for Honmono. He still eventually gets his production up running and he can still still go into his uh timing maybe or he may have to be forced to transition instead and i mean the problem with this for hon mono as well is he was going for a very heavy marine timing and with a timing like this where you're going for the reactor every marine counts even losing a few here and there to the stalkers here will be quite significant and nice he smells blood he's going for four gate here yeah exactly two more gates are on the way two already done we have to evacuate the natural base the tank does come out in time here for hon mono so he will be able to maintain control of the high ground but oh my god nice even flexing a little bit of his micro picks off more units 
yeah, very well done with the micro there. Just keeping all of these stalkers alive, picking off as many of these marines that he can. And every marine counts here. It's really going to take a lot of the sting out of the push for Hon Mono. And as Hon Mono now, what do you do? You wanted to be the one that was the aggressor, but suddenly Nice has put you on the back foot here, and it's very hard to know how to find your way back into this game. Yeah, exactly. He's going to be forced to either turtle up or just go to some kind of timing. But before that can even happen, Nice shows up here with an immortal. He targets down that tank, and with the death of the tank, and without Stim, like Nice can just have his way with these Marines. Yeah, Nice is just busting through with this aggression now, taking out that tank as well, taking out so many of these Marines and getting out with the Prism, getting every last hit point out of these units here. Ooh, exactly, but oh, a little bit of a misstep. He will end up losing that Immortal in the retreat. Is it worth it though, losing an Immortal for as many Marines that have fallen? 100%. We do have a second tank, and again, because of this, Hon Mono will be able to regain control or gain control of his natural. He actually never had control of it, uh, <laughs> but he now has it. Uh, and we can see he's working on more upgrades. He even actually throws down an NG bay. Yeah, that's right. He will have that NG bay on the way, but this timing that he was looking to go for is just gone now. And uh, Nice might even finish up this shade, just get a bit of splash damage. Good on Siege there by Hon Mono, but he's going to lose the tank. Oh my god, the tank is going to go down, not just one, maybe even a second. Okay, here we go. The Marines are going to rush down the ramp here to help reinforce. Stim is done, by the way. So if Nice ever overextends, Hon Mono can Stim on forward and take this down. But because of the 3 axe opener, we still don't have a starport, by the way. There is no way to regen these Marines. Every Stim matters. Yeah, that's right. And Nice has been absolutely relentless with his pressure here. He is not giving Hon Mono any room to breathe at all. Just trying to take out units at every juncture that he can. And this has just been such an uncomfortable game from Hon Mono, uh, yeah. for Hon Mono. Uh, exactly. And the final tank goes down. Another tank is about to finish up here. But with the micro of this war prison, it looks like the, the immortal is going to be saved. We still don't see a stim here from Hon, Hon Mono. Very patient with his units. I don't blame him, but it's still just so difficult to, to survive even to push this back yeah that's right this was meant to be an all-in timing to try to kill nice and he's barely been able to survive against the aggression of nice and nice just does not stop with this uh, he does not stop. The tech doesn't stop either. Dark Shrine st starts up here for Nice. I love the choice because we only have two CCs. As I say that, we have a third CC on the way. So Hon Mono looks to try and turtle on up. He recognizes that there is no way to hit any kind of timing right now. But I'm sure he, right now, more than anything, he wishes to mule, not to scan. Yeah, that's right. He does have to use those mules to keep himself in this game. But at the same time, Nice hasn't thrown down his third yet. Nice has gone very aggressive on the gateways. Uh, gone up to, I believe it's eight gateways already. Uh, so he has a lot of potential for aggression if he chooses to take it. But he's also in position to take that third as well. Yeah, exactly. He does have that probe there at that pocket base to take the third base. At the same time, the tank's looking a little bit exposed. And yes, Nice is going to pull the trigger once again, diving on top of the tanks. One of them going down. The second is going to go down as well. Yeah, Nice has done such a good job of keeping this tank count low, not allowing Hon Mono to build up his defenses. And we do see a stim finally coming out from Hon Mono, but these Marines are so red, they're going to have to fully commit on these units now. Oh my god, they have to commit. And you know what? The Immortal survives. They get ferried up into the main base as that attack was happening at the Natural Heels. Pulled away. The attention was not in the main. And we have a massive warping here in the main base. Wow, Nice just taking over the main. And he was relentless in this game. GG. G <laughs> GG gets called nice again. Welcome to the region, Hon Mono. <laughs> uh, uh -huh. mate, you think you can go for your two base timings here? Nah, mate, not against me, not against the champ, mate. Mate, you're not all inning. I'm all inning. I'm gonna be in your face from the start, from the get go. Just microing the units, jumping in and out of the prisms non stop. Nice says, Welcome to this region. Whew. <laughs> And oh. just like that, gets the 1-0 lead. Yeah, yeah, a very powerful showing here from our reigning champion from Nice. Uh, but Hon Mono just wasn't able to play out his game. You know, he he, he had a plan to, to, to begin with, and he just, again, just wasn't able to get into it. I want to believe, I want to believe in his builds. I want to believe in his timings. It's all about whether or not he can get there. Yeah, absolutely. This is a game where Nice did not let him play his game at all so i would for hon mono's sake really like to see what he has in store what he can do in a game where he does get a little bit more room to breathe but if i'm nice and i know that i've just put this much pressure on that i've just stressed hon mono out for the full duration of that game and just been able to show off and flex my skills there i think i'm just going to do that again
<laughs> yeah, why not? You know, if it worked the first time, it can work again. What happens if I put the pressure on my opponents? Bearing in mind, it's not just the, the pressure of your units. It's also the pressure of being on the main stage or being a part of this uh, broadcast for the first time as well. Hon Mono, it's not like he, he's been a part of GSL. He hasn't really been a part of these major broadcasts in the past. This is his first foray here. He's a relatively new player. And I'm sure because of that, there is also a lot of other stresses and a lot of pressure on him. Yeah, absolutely. And this is definitely a veteran move by Nice to make that first game as stressful as possible. But Hon Mono, he's gotten settled in. He's ready for this next game and let's see what he can do now. Here he is spawning in the top left hand corner representing Prep Esports. It is the Korean Terran hailing from Japan, Hon Mono. And spawning in the bottom right hand corner of Cosmic Sapphire, we have the Taiwanese Protoss player himself, the reigning champion representing Good Game Gaming. GTT! It's is nice. Here he goes once again with this very early probe scout, setting the tone for this game once again that he's going to be in Hon Mono's face from the get go. Uh, he was very aggressive with this probe the first time as well, just trying to get as much damage as he can on these building workers, and it's such a nuisance to deal with. Yeah, just tasing away at these workers, even forcing a third SCV on the, off the line here from, from Hon Mono. Meanwhile, Hon Mono quick to take both of his gases, so this time he won't be slowed down when it comes to his gas income here, but maybe already getting into his mind a little bit nice is after, after that first game. Yeah, it is true, but I do like for Homona, he does get this double gas down, does mean that he has a few more options in terms of aggression and also in terms of safety. And he does manage to lock this probe in as well. He doesn't, he says, you're not, uh, I'm not trapped in here with you. You're trapped in here with me, buddy. <laughs> exactly. This probe is not going to be long for this world. We'll see how long Nice can keep it alive and we'll see if he can keep it alive long enough to try and get a scout of the follow up buildings here on how uh, Honmono wants to progress. He at least gets eyes on the gas counts, so he's fully aware that we haven't really seen too much being pulled out and the factory is thrown down yeah that's right as you're referring to there uh, it would be it will be important for nice to see how much uh is being pulled out of gas by hon mono to see if he's going into more of a standard macro build or opting to all in even getting a little bit of extra damage on this scv here very cheeky wow even recalls the probe to safety as well nice not losing a single unit here getting the full scout off it does cost him a little bit of energy here but you know nice just just flexing a little bit when he can yeah, this is one of those mental victory things. It's like when you have the Reaper at the start of the game in the TVZ and it's whether you can get that one link. Mm -hmm. It doesn't really matter in the grand scheme of things, but I feel like you can get into your opponent's head about what the tone of this game is going to be. Yeah, exactly. And we'll see if that's that's going to be happening here in this first game. Hon Mono back across the map, actually opting to go for a Widow Mine here, um, following, of course, by that CC. But looking at his vision, he still hasn't really been able to scout the opener. He still is unaware of the tech of Nice. Yeah, it looks like Hon Mono going for a little bit more of a standard two base uh, opening. This is something we've been seeing a lot in TVP in the current meta, uh, out of players like Maru, out of players like Cure, where you go for this very flexible 1-1-1 one, one, one setup. And this should be able to deal with any opening that comes out from the Protoss, but it's going to be important for Hon Mono to find out exactly what the tech building is. Yeah, exactly. Here we go. The Reaper does make it into the main base. And with this, he's going to be able to get a full scout of the Stargate. So he's fully aware of the potential of Phoenixes or more like the oracles to begin with there we go immediately a viking is started for hon mono yeah that's right so hon mono is going to be starting off with a little bit more of a defensive play going for that cyclone soon after going for the viking as well he does have a few options here he can go for a fast third cc for a bit more of an economic response or he can go for an aggressive timing to try to break a greedy stargate opener we'll have to see what he has in store for this one yeah, exactly. I mean, I imagine he's going to op opt for the more aggressive uh, variation, but we'll see. We'll see as we only have a single Oracle coming out for Nice followed by that Phoenix. So he's going to be committing a little bit more to that Stargate style, not just opening up for aggression, but looking to commit. And that first Oracle is coming across that. He has to be careful because there is a mine in that mineral line. Yeah, there's a couple well-hidden mines through the base of Hon Mono, Ooh. but a nice revelation there. He's going to spot the one sitting behind the rack there, so uh, nice cautious play coming out from Nice, and he's happy just to leave with that. Nice. 
Nice. <laughs> yeah, exactly. He doesn't want to throw away his lead. He doesn't want to throw away his oracles. Well, he respects his opponent enough that, of course, because of the 1 1 1 opener, there should be a couple of mines there. Or there should be enough anti air to really defend against the oracle. So, yeah, being a little bit more conservative with it instead. And, ooh, actually follows up the first Phoenix with a Void Ray. Yeah, very interesting. There's quite a few different things that this could be. Uh, there is a potential for the Void Ray to be just simply on a drop defense, but I have also sometimes seen some gateway busts, even charge busts that come out of uh, Void Ray opener like this, but it does look like Nice is expecting aggression to be coming his way and just wants to shut it down as hard as he can. Yeah, exactly. I mean, with his scout, he's going to be able to confirm the army outside the natural base. We have two shield batteries, overcharge, and a stasis trap, um, so he's well ready for any kind of push, any kind of move out, and if there ever is, he also has a couple of adepts ready for a backstab. Yeah, that's right. Meanwhile, from Hon Mono, we only see the extra Rax is going down now. So I was thinking that he might be going for a 3cc build, but it looks like he's just trying to play things very safe for the moment. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. And maybe he's even mind gaming his opponent as well. I'm sure Hon Mono has a reputation, and I think Nice is good enough to research his opponent a little bit, look into his opponent, and recognize oh, Hon Mono is a little bit cheesy, is a little bit aggressive, a little bit all in. Let me just play things safe. Yeah, rather interesting standoff here where I think both players think that the other player is going for a two base yeah. all in. <laughs> because uh, this Reaper for Hon Mono, it's been fantastic. He's uh, keeping this alive the whole way throughout the start of this game. And he's been able to get so much scouting and realizes he hasn't seen a third go down yet. So both players kind of not really wanting to commit too much to anything in particular until they see the other player show their cards. Yeah, exactly. It's a little bit of a game of ki ki uh, chicken here. I almost said kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> it is a game of kitchen. Who's going to come out? <laughs> with the goods with the hot ramen who's gonna to cook first wait i haven't eaten today Bobby. okay i'm hungry <laughs> oh, no. i, I have which one of these players is gonna cook me a succulent meal <laughs> i have a dare ice coffee in front of me mate that's what's powering me right now as nice finally pushes that across the map just once again confirming does have eyes on the building third base the building third cc so now he knows his opponent was looking to be the defender and ooh, with his positioning is able to lay it yeah, Nice is not happy with this CC positioning here. He does see that this does have the potential to be punished. It does kind of uh, bottleneck some of these units for Hon Mono and is forced to pull some SEVs as well just to hold this. But beautiful micro coming out from Nice, dancing yeah. back and forth with the units. Exactly, just absolutely making use of this choke point to his advantage. Um, Hon Mono really struggling, losing a lot of his Marines. In the end, in the end, he will finish up this third CC, but after quite a number of losses. Yeah, that's right. He did lose quite a bit. And for Nice, he really didn't have to commit too much with this attack. He has a third coming up behind this, even a little bit ahead of that of Hon Mono. So he has been able to arrest the development of Hon Mono quite a little bit. And this stim only just finishing up now means both players don't really have that much of an aggressive potential. Yeah, exactly. Hon Mono is going to be stuck at home looking to try and establish his third base and waiting for his upgrades. Plus one, barely just now starting as well for him. So I, I can't imagine he wants to move out before that happens. Meanwhile, Nice is doing just a great job at keeping an eye on the army and on the production. Yeah, Nice absolutely being the bully in this game. Does have his proxy pylon set up on both sides of Hon Mono's base now. So he does have a lot of potential for aggression in the future. Even putting down this stasis trap just to continue to delay Hon Mono taking his third. Yeah, exactly. Being oh so annoying. Meanwhile, Hon Mono, he's had enough of just being stuck at home. He's looking to expand, looking to push out at the same time. His army does get spotted by this pylon. So Nice likewise is also rotating over to the left hand side. Getting ready, ready with his tag defense, with his cannons. And I imagine shield battery. Yeah, this Oracle the control from Nice has just been so frustrating and annoying for Hon Mono. He wants to push out, he wants to get across the map, but he's just being watched the entire time and that puts doubts in your mind. Yeah, exactly. Do you really want to move out when, you're, when your opponent is playing with map hacks? When he sees you moving, then uh, you're vulnerable to counterattacks, or you're, again, your opponent will be ready to receive you once that does happen. Finally, Hon Mono is going to push out once again. Not enough energy for Revelation, but ooh, he does run into the Protoss army. Beautiful force fields there as well, just sectioning off so much of the army here, picking off whatever he can. This micro from Nice has been fantastic, just taking out so many of the units of Hon Mono before he can even get across the map here. And Hon Mono's army has just been cut in half. Oh my god, exactly. He's being manhandled right now. The majority of those Widowmines going down. The drag as well on top oh. of the bio army! Stunning drag there from Nice. Takes out so much of the army and just warps in extra stalkers from that gateway that he set up earlier. And he is just going to roll over this position of Hon Monos now. Wow, exactly. There's nothing left. There's only a handful of Marines and Marauders remaining. The third CC is still weakened from earlier behind this. Nice is even taking the goal base because why the hell not? And he's just, he's just snowballing. 
Yeah, Nice is taking a commanding lead over this game. He has all of his gateways set up now, ready to go. Having the Charge Lord sending in is going to take out this base as well. Oh. And that spells doom for the hopes of Hon Mono here. Yeah, exactly. Hon Mono forced onto two bases. And I'm sure he's used to being stuck on two bases, but not like this, Papi. Not like this. As Nice is pushing on forward even further into the natural. And there's just no there's no backbone to the army of Hon Mono. There are no Widowmines. There are no tanks. Yeah, Nice. He smells blood. He's going to keep... Going and going and going, trying to take out even this natural as well. Uh, he's been relentless throughout this series, and with these medevacs going down as well, so do the hopes of Hon Mono in this series. Yeah, exactly. We saw more defensive style from him, but really nice was able to take full advantage of that. Every single SCV is going down. We see the aggressive blink forward. GG gets called, and nice takes the series 2 0.